afternoon, boys and girls, wherever you may happen to be, whether you're watching live or you're, whether you're watching the recording. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this is episode 73 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, and today we are going to start by smelling a perfume. Um, but all I want to do is just make sure that we are coming through loud and clear. Let me just get this going on the tablet so that I can see comments. Um, keep comments and hellos coming, but I think today I'm going to try and be a little bit more organized and not sort of keep interrupting what I'm saying while I um, respond to the comments. But please start saying your hellos and keep the comments coming. And this is what we're going to start with. So I will start by smelling a perfume and then I will explain what it is that we are doing. Uh, in For those of you who aren't aware, I have trailed what I was going to do. We're going to start with this because this is the one that I'd already said um, that I would be smelling. This is... I, th I think it's probably fair to say, hang on, let me sort of hold it properly so that you can see. I think it's fair to call this a modern classic. It just nipped onto the market at the end of the 20th century. It's a 1999 release from Guerlain. You can see it's one of their Aqua Allegoria range. And this this is, I think in, we're supposed to say Herba Fresca, but we usually just say Herba Fresca. Um, so, Let's kick things off with this and then I will do my hellos and tell you what we're doing today and ask for your comments, etc, etc. But I thought we'd, we'd better start with a perfume. Hang on, let me just arrange things here. Let's put, let's put um, the Guerlain here. How does that look? Because I can't really, I've told you before, I can't really see, if I look here on this particular screen, I can't see exactly what you're seeing. I have to look here on the tablet. Um, I can see a few people have already left comments. I promise I will um, get to all of them in due course, but let's start with this. And already, you you must know this. A lot of you will know Herba Fresca, right? Um, already, the tone is set, the mood is set for what I am intending the next hour to be. Um, for the few of you who aren't aware, uh, this is one of the best, one of my favorite, probably actually my, my favorite evocations of smells like freshly cut grass, freshly cut mint, very important here. Um, the perfumer Mathilde Laurent quite likes mint as a note. I think this is probably still one of her best handlings of, of mint. It's, it is an instant, instant ray of sunshine and really, really hot sunshine. Um, not sweltering, but you know when, when spring sunshine starts to really give you the feeling that, that, that winter is well and truly on its way out. And the mintiness, and this is what's remarkable about it, the mintiness never ever goes into, in my opinion, into toothpaste territory or harsh cleaning product territory. It's been handled very, very well remarkably well and it's 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 just being outdoors and I'm trying to think of see I've, I've, I've never been to a tennis match and I've never been to Wimbledon um, but things like freshly cut grass having having a picnic on freshly cut grass with the sun on your face. I keep going on about the sun, but interestingly, this is one of the first perfumes that I reach for when I also want to create a sense of, of cooling down. I don't really adjust my perfume wearing to times of the year, but sometimes if it's a really, really muggy day, I think that's the word I'm looking for, that's the, this seems to cut through everything like that. So it's, it's, it's crystalline, piercing sunshine, really, really sharp, really clear, and yet uplifting at the same time. And, oh, I, and, and lots and lots of aromatic herbs in there as well. So, why have we started with Herba Fresca? Because what I would like to do today is do another sort of top 10 rundown video and I would like to share with you my favorite perfumes that create a convincing evocation of the outdoors. I think the outdoors for 
uh, reasons that will be obvious to people who are watching live. Hopefully they will not be so obvious to people watching in the future, but for, for reasons about to do with what is happening in the world at the moment, many of us are craving the outdoors. Some of us may be fortunate enough to, to, to have gardens, uh, etc., or to not be very far away from open spaces, but a lot of us don't have um, that opportunity at the moment. And I think smells can be a very, very effective way of transporting us to different landscapes. Um, it was the first day of spring, uh, last Friday, wasn't it? So I just thought this is a perfect opportunity to, um, to, to, to run through my top 10 favorite perfumes that evoke a sense of the outdoors, which makes them a really, really, which, which makes the list appropriate as well as a sort of top 10 of my favorite perfumes for spring at the moment. Um, I forced myself, just like I did my top 10 personal list the other day, I forced myself not to overthink this. I'm very, very good at overthinking and then sort of just becoming blocked and paralyzed and not being able to move on. I tried not to overthink this, so I just thought, okay, what are the first 10 that come into my head? Think about it, see if there are any other ones. Um, and, and so this is a kind of snapshot of what my favorites happen to be at the moment, but I would like to hear what yours are. The ones that you can see here, apart from the Herbachesco, of course, are ones that nearly, nearly made the cut, so I thought I would just go through them very, very quickly. Over here, you've got Penhaligon's Orange Blossom, you've got Aqua di Palma's Arancia di Capri, you've got from the Lucknow-based uh, perfume house, Sukantko, you've got, you've got uh, their scent called Gajra, which is just one of the most perfect jasmine soli floors I've ever tried from. L'Artisan Parfumeur, I don't even know if they still do this actually, but this is one which for non-French speakers is really interesting. La Haie Fleury, or Hey Fleury. Um, from Serge Lutens, I got Sa Majesté la Rose. Uh, from Ul Ulrich Lang, I really, really agonized over this one because Apsu, I just love, I think it's one of the best perfumes, well, I've said actually on, um, on my blog that I think it's one of the best perfumes of the um, last decade. I've got here Lavender Extreme from Tom Ford, The Smell of Freedom from Gor Gorilla or Lush. So those are the ones that, that I thought, oh, I'd love to mention them, but I'm not gonna put them in the top 10 because I want to be really, really strict about this. Herba Fresca is, is, is the first one. We've got nine more to share with you. So I'm going to start going through comments and saying hellos. Uh, I've already said thank you very much for tuning in. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, hearts, thumbs up, likes, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, etc, etc, etc. Please keep um, the questions and comments coming. I've got, wow, I've got loads of comments. Okay, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Right, let's go through this quickly. Yay, I was able to make it. That was the first comment from Druba. Hello, right, Glory. Hi to you as well. Q George says, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you very much for tuning in. Glad to see the Sun Jardin series and the Aqua Allegoria series. Um, why do you say Sun? Oh, never mind. Uh, hello from Chicago, says Taffy, expecting rain. Oh, well, you've got to have a bit of rain sometimes. Hello, Ashfag. Hello from Bucharest, says Cousin73. Hello from San Francisco, the quiet city, David. Oh, most cities probably are quiet at the moment, aren't they? Hi from Dublin to Emma. Is that right? Have I said your name correctly? Hello from Manchester, Andrea. Hey, from Portugal. Um, Ashfag says, I saw that Red Ken discontinued hair gel on eBay. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. Hair is going to be an issue for the next few weeks, isn't it? Hair is, um, yeah, I think there was an article in one of the papers today that said that everybody's sort of waiting with bated breath to see whether men go for the buzz cut at the moment or whether they go for the sort of Game of Thrones scruffy look. I'm probably going to go for the latter, but, but let's see how it goes. I'm kind of thinking maybe this needs to be, I haven't got enough to tie back, but anyway, you, you have to bear with me. Uh, hello from Singapore, says Angeline. Best wishes to you out there. Good afternoon from Stanley Stockholm, says Vitali. Hi from just up the road, says Christine. Sunny and freezing. Um, it's not freezing here. Um, bonjour from Paris, says Chang Lu. This is amazing. This is so touching. So many of you saying hello and, and, and tuning in. Uh, and good morning from Arkansas. Oh, okay, so you're there. Ashfaq says, upon seeing your earlier notification, I'm wearing Etude en Fougère, a lovely and very green Fougère from Sultan Pasha. Okay. Well said, Persele says, right, Glory. I'm glad I can't even remember what I was saying. Rosalie is in Seattle saying, good morning. How is Orange Blossom? I'm incredibly curious about it. Um, I, I won't dwell on it now, but I love it. I, it it's, it's probably my, it's certainly one of my favorite Penhaligon's perfumes, um, may well be my favorite. Uh, Christine says, one of these has to be uh, Sous, sous, le, sous le Bouis. Um, 
I wonder, no, I, I can tell you it's not that one. Uh, Anna Grzyb says greetings from Germany. Peggy says hello. Lynn Smell says hello. Uh, 4160 Tuesdays, Ealing Green is my number one. Ah, interesting. I haven't tried that one from 4160 Tuesdays. Uh, Cousin says I will wear Extrait d'Atelier Maître Chausseur this spring along with Etalie Birange, you or someone like you. Ah, now see. Actually, that would have been a good one. Very, very underrated scent, I think, from Etta Libre. You or someone like you. I, I, I like that one a lot. Um, Rachel says, hey. And Ashfaq says, no Jiki or Mitsuko. Um, no, Jiki and Mitsuko. I mean, Jiki, I suppose, in some ways might make me think of the outdoors, but but, the, but there's too much going on there. So what was what was kind of the, the, the criteria for this? Before, because I'm determined to do this in, in less than an hour. Remember, this is my thing that you, the, my, the YouTube videos mustn't be longer than an hour. Um, the cri number one criteria was don't overthink it. Just enjoy this and don't turn it into a Frankenstein for yourself, per se. But it, 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 and also to make very, very personal choices, I suppose, was, this, was the second um, criterion. Um, to, to, to really think which are the scents that as soon as I spray them, I immediately get a sense of being transported. And I suppose, to, for me, it is things that are fairly streamlined, so not things that are overly symphonic, uh, that have a huge amount going on in them. So, for example, one of the ones that I considered was Beyond Paradise from Estee Lauder, which, you know, fantastic, dewy, celestial cosmic um jasmine scent but but it is it is th th there there is something so symphonic about it that i thought no this isn't the, the, the genius scent though it is i mean i absolutely adore beyond paradise um it it doesn't capture that sense of maybe just picking up a picking up a scent that's been carried on the breeze or walking past a field of something or, or just, you know, brushing your hands past some petals and feeling the scent of them uh, are, are on your fingers. So there aren't any huge florals on the list. Uh, there's, there's one outlier, but I thought, okay, well, we need to have an outlier. So I suppose there are things that are herbal, uh, tending towards green, uh, aromatic, um, so that, that's what I was going for, I think, with the smell of the outdoors. And of course, that in itself is a very, very subjective thing because the outdoors may mean lots of things to lots of different people. One that I wanted to put down here in my nearly made it list, but I couldn't find my sample in time. I know it's there somewhere, but I couldn't find it, was another one actually from uh, Lush, Curbside Violet, because I think that's a really, really clever sort of 21st century take on the outdoors because it, it does smell of violets, and but it also smells of petrol and gasoline and and, and so it's it, it's it's all about the sort of contrast between um the urban and the rural um but i think we need to get going have i missed any comments i think i, I think i got a face somebody was saying what one of their favorites is uh rachel says favorite outdoor scents bois blanc by perfumery general and nicolai's vie de chateau i don't know that one but i like the name of it umberto says scent of the day's white linen i, I see white linen might have been an interesting one although Again, it, it, there is something quite grand about white linen with all those outer highs. Thruba says, you or someone like you is perfect for this weather. My bottle broke. Oh, no. So now I essentially have a diffuser that smells of mint green notes and rose. Lovely. Let's get on with the list. Uh, Peggy, uh, Eau Adrienne by Annick Goutal does it for me. Yes, things like that. Eau de Sud. Uh, hello from Pennsylvania, says Anne. Thank you very much for tuning in. And Ashfaq, again, you are fortunate to have a proper spring. We have spring, but with 35 degrees plus Celsius, I cannot wait for the winter. Yeah, so you can't please everybody. And Lynn Smell says, Etta Libre is the afternoon of a fawn to substitute a wander in the woods. Yeah, interesting. It's not on, it's not on my list, although I adore that scent. And um, Umberto says, Nagel's Eau de Cartier. Yeah, that would have been interesting. That would have been an interesting one. I haven't got it, actually. I think I've got one of the variants that maybe that was done by, um, by Mathilde Laurent. Um, and bef I've just seen Angeline has written something. There you go. From my stash, I would pick Cristal Auvert from Chanel, Jardin en Méditerranée. Ah, stay tuned. And Angélique sous la pluie. Do you know? I know Angélique has a lot of fans, but I think that's one of my least favorite mouths. I don't know what it is about it, but it has a lot of fans. Antland. I absolutely adore Aqua Brava by Pooch, since I live next to a 
Big pine forest, it makes me feel outside. What about Mem from Bogue, says Ashfaq. Well, again, you know, great scent, but it's not there. Okay, we need to carry on, okay, because we're at the 15 minute mark. Ooh, where to go next, where to go next, where to go next. Actually, well, I've kind of let one out of the bag already, haven't I? So let's do it. This is inspired by Angeline's comment just now. Uh, somebody on Instagram said that, uh, w when I trailed this episode, somebody on Instagram said, so that's basically going to be uh, your Jean-Claude Elena episode. Um, and I, I, know, I, know, I know what they meant, because there is something, there is something about Jean-Claude Jean Elena's work which, which is really very, very sad for France, not surprisingly, because that's where he comes from. And a, a lot of life in the south of France, of course, is, is, is lived outdoors because you can, because of, of the gorgeous climate. And he, and he captures, um, he captures the light of that part of the world very well. He captures the sense that you just kind of pick up on the breeze. Um, having said all of that, of course, this one is not um, this one is not inspired by his his side of the Mediterranean, if you like, because it's inspired by the other side. This is from Hermès, from their rightly respected Jardin range, and this is un jardin en Méditerranée. These names today are really testing my my appalling French accent, but it's 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 a garden. It's it's a garden um, on the Mediterranean, and this one, for those of you who don't know, is a really really great um, fig, outdoorsy sort of fig, um, because again, fig I think is a smell that you can genuinely pick up on the breeze. It, it carries very well. Uh, one of my favorite places to go to in the south of France, um, a, a walk that I like to go on. There's one bit of the walk where you sort of turn a corner and you always pick up a smell of fig. It, it, is, a, it is a scent that carries. Right, if I pop it there, would you be able to see it? Yeah, that kind of looks all right. And There are lots and lots of uh, great fig perfumes out there, of course. You know, the, the famous one from La Saison Parfumeur, composed by Olivia Giacobetti, I think. Um, there's, a, there's a really good one from Annie Coutal. Um, but A, I had to go for something that I had in my collection, and B, I wanted to, like I said, to choose something that personally I do actually wear. And this is, I mean, okay, it, it, is, it is fig, so it's got that, it's, it's got the greenness of fig, but it's also got the woodiness. And something that I always associate as being a bit nutty, you know, like walnuts, the, the, that kind of very, very dry feel that walnuts have, I think comes out in this perfume as well. Maybe a sense of the sort of greenness of tomato leaf. Um, and the sun is shining here, but but I think, I think it's also an evening scent. Um, you know, it's, it's one where maybe the sun is setting and you're sitting in the garden and you're surrounded by fig trees, fig leaves, and you're, you're reflecting on a day well spent. You know, maybe you've been actually quite productive in the garden and it, it's got that earthy feel. Maybe there's a patchouli note in there, you know, that moist, rich soil. It's, yeah, I mean, I should do this more often, actually, just, just lift myself up with perfume. I'd like, you, I'd like to share with you what the brand says about the perfume um, on a line, and then we will uh, look at a few more comments. So where are we? Um, an expression in perfume of a Mediterranean memory, a mosaic of olfactory, visual and tactile sensations, says Jean-Claude Elena. A novella that describes the spirit of a Mediterranean garden luxuriant with trees and flowers and evokes a mosaic of scents gathered from a private garden in Tunisia. Like a travelogue, this fragrance conjures up an idyllic world of shadows, water and light on the theme of a fig tree allied with Mediterranean zest. Olfactory strolls through the different annual themes of the house. Okay, Le Jardin. So, so there you go. Basically, what I said as well. Let's see what comments we've missed. Do, 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 do. Okay, Right Glory says, my scent of the day is Lys Mediterranée from Frederick Mal. So green, it really, I really love that one. I wish Madame Persolet's like that one because I gave her a bottle a few years ago and she's not so keen. Uh, Chang says, my scent of the day is Oris Tattoo from Parlement de Parfum. Ah, very good, okay. Marcus says, my scent of the day is Héritage Editive from Garlin. Uh, do you know, I think that may have been 
my first my first garland that I actually wore. Um, uh, DB says, hi, afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. Joao says hello from Paris. Bonjour, bon après-midi. Uh, Druba again, I've been wearing uh, Molinar Fig, the, the body shop Lo Lily of the Valley, Un Jardin de Monsieur Lee, okay, Aqua di Parma Colonia Club, and uh, Armani Pour Homme, Eau Pour Homme, and Garland Vetiver. Uh, I hope you have some Mittiatar, says Ashfaq. No, I'm afraid I don't. And DB70 uh, says, scent of the day, Quinota di Liguria. So I will just put this here because let's make that. The next one, because that's on my, that's on the list as well. We'll talk about that next then, shall we? Uh, good I got you live, says 87 Linseed. I'm, I'm very glad to be got live. Hello from Canada, Mystery Forms. Uh, right, Gloria again. Jardin en Méditerranée is one of my all-time favourites. Very pleased to hear it. You have to try Icnusa by Profumum Roma. If you like fig, you will love it. So fresh and green. Interesting. Uh, hello from Mexico, says 87 Linseed, and Angeline, my scent of the day is Jour d'Hermes, and my latest fave is Rosé Queer from Frederick Mal. Interesting, okay. <laughs> nice reaction there from DB70. And Cousin, scent of the day is Roger's, mids, uh, as in Roger Dubs, Midsummer Dream, which works great to remind of warmer days. Fantastic. Okay, so as we've got this one out, I think we should smell it next. Now, this is, again... Um, one that I genuinely wore, uh, came out, when did Kinota come out? Uh, where's my list, where's my list, where's my list? 2018, so it's, 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 it's a relatively newish one. By the way, for those who are interested, Jardin en Méditerranée is 2003. This one, uh, Kinota, is of course from the, uh, from Aqua di Palma's Blue Mediterranean range, as is Arancia di Capri. Um, and I was, uh, I confess, completely ignorant about what a kinotto is, but it's a citrus fruit. And um, you know those, uh, is it San Pellegrino, the, the fizzy drinks, you know, you get San Pellegrino orange. Um, in Italy, you get San Pellegrino kinotto. Actually, you know, this isn't product placement here. I think lots of brands in Italy do a fizzy kinotto drink. So I thought uh, the next time I go to Italy, uh, and I think actually the last time was in in 2018 that I did this. Um, I wore the Kinotto scent and I went into a shop and I got the fizzy drink and I thought, okay, well, let's compare. The, the drink is, is interesting. I'm not surprised that um, it isn't widely available outside of Italy because I guess it must be a bit of an acquired taste. You know how things like root beer and ginger beer are a bit of an acquired taste and you don't get them all over the world. This had a sort of strange metallic quality. The... The, the the more challenging aspects of it are uh, have have been uh, have been kept at, at at arm's length in the Aqua di Parma scent. So what you get is again um, sunshine, sea breeze, um, and and actually breeze is right here because you you get this sense of you know the first time if you if you live in a place where you are able to do this the first time that in in any given year when when the weather allows you to hang your washing outside. There's something special about that. Um, and, and I don't think there's anything quite like the smell of clothes that, that, have been, that have been dried outdoors, you know, in the breeze. And this captures that, that, that spring freshness, that spring optimism, and that feeling of, of being uplifted by, by the wind, by the breeze. Um, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed wearing it when, when I had my sample and I enjoyed um, I enjoyed uh, drinking the drink and then actually I tried to find it in the UK and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, comments then, 87 Linseed said, I get a foul smell from Garlin Mouchoir de Monsieur. Have you experienced this? Um, well, well, we'll put that one to one side, but that's because it has a very strong civet note. Uh, Chang says, Florabellio of Diptyque is a good spring scent. Uh, yes, I remember that one. Wasn't that the one that was um, apple, apple and a kind of aniseedy note, I think. Lynn Smell says, a bitter little mandarin, Kinotto. Yes, thank you very much. Absolutely. Bitter. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you very much. The joys of doing this live, right? Um, we've only done three and we're nearly at the half an hour mark, so let's keep going, let's keep going. Ooh, what should I do next? Okay, let me now go to the oldest one on my list. And let's get another blotter. I don't think I really need to do apple flower, says Chang. Yes, that was it from Florabelli. I'm not sure I need to do um, 
uh, a blotter update for this episode, do I? Because I'm basically telling you that I think all of these scents are pretty wonderful and, and they develop really well. So I, 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 we'll, we'll skip the blotter, blotter update for this one because doing a blotter update for 10 would be hard as well. And this, you will all know this one, I'm sure. This is the oldest perfume on the list. It is from 1934. Genuine, genuine classic, hugely, hugely popular, still, I believe, in France. I'm sure Lynn will agree with me. It is the one and only Pour un homme from Caron. Um, I think we now consider to the, this to be the first perfume that was specifically, overtly marketed uh, towards men. Uh, composed by Ernest Doltroff, 1934, still around and still probably one of the best, um, where's a fair place to put it? Where are you going to go, Carol? Let's pop you here. Still, I think, one of the best lavender scents ever. And, oh, oh, now see, this is like, we actually have some lavender growing in the garden. Obviously, it's not in blossom yet. But this is just still so perfect. It's so, so, so perfect. It's uh, it, what makes this scent interesting is that it was one of the first examples, some people say the first example, of lavender being combined with a vanillic note. That's not such an uncommon thing to do nowadays. Uh, Vero Kern um, exploited that uh, uh, fantastically as well in, in, in Kiki, which is, uh, again, a fantastic lavender, one of, one of, one of the best lavenders ever. Um, there is something about the kind of burnt, caramelized aspects of vanilla that just goes so fantastically with, with lavender. It seems to latch on to the sweetness of lavender and somehow um, lifts the, the herbal sides, the, the faintly, faintly camphoraceous sides, brings out the floral note because as, as, as perfumers are quite often keen to point out, um, Lavender is a flower, you know, we, we, yes, it counts as, 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 as an aromatic note, um, but it is a flower, the, the tiny little flowers that grow on those stalks. Um, and this is, oh, you would, just, you would just want this in the most luxuriant soap. And I think it still actually does exist as a soap in France. And just, or a really, really decadent um, bath oil. Just beautiful, just beautiful. Um, my my late father-in-law was an au oh, sauvage man. I tried to convert him to this. It didn't work. He stuck to um, he stuck to his au oh, sauvage. But of all of the perfumes I tried to convert him to, this was the one that I think gave him the longest pause, where he thought, "Oh, maybe maybe there is something in this." Uh, let's do a few more comments. Uh, Q. George says, Eau de Narcisse Bleu. Yes, another one that I kind of put on my, ooh, should I include it? Because I love, love, love that one as well from Hermès. Reminds me of early spring and Ashfaq is doing a little sad face uh, because when I mentioned Vera Cohn because of course she is no longer with us. So we're four, we're not quite on the half hour mark. Let's do a fifth one then. We're doing well. I am gonna go, Lavender comes up again actually. So uh, let's do the outlier now. Let's do let's do the let's do the sort of slightly oddball one. There had to be an outlier. My outlier for my top ten perfumes that make me think of uh, the outdoors, or my top twenty um, perfumes for spring. Sorry, my top ten perfumes for spring twenty twenty is maybe you will agree, maybe you'll disagree. Is this jasmine a cigarette, a jasmine and cigarette from Etat Libre d'Orange. But I will tell you why. I will explain why. Let me let me spray it on a blotter and let it do its thing on me, which it never ever fails to do. This was, um, of course, composed by Antoine Maison Dieu, who did quite a few fantastic scents for the house, and it was released in 2006, according to my notes. Shall we pop it here? I think that would be a good place for it. Yes, how does that look? And I love this stuff. See, now I'm thinking, why didn't I put this in my top 10 favorites? But anyway, can't, can't overthink. I'll tell you why. The, it, first of all, <clears throat> this is what it says, okay? It is, it is a jasmine note combined with a really, really clear tobacco note. Um, 
in fact, it's it it. It, it, it's quite a sort of chuckle-raising tobacco note because it's almost like cigarettes that have been left in the ashtray for too long or an ashtray that has been that, that hasn't been cleaned um, or like maybe a car ashtray you know where, where you haven't emptied it back in the days when cars had ashtrays God, who remembers those but the moment I smelt this and I can't remember when I first smelt this but it would have been in the last it would have been in the last 10 years it 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 immediately conjured up an image that that it, curiously n hardly any I think actually maybe no other jasmine scent conjures up in me and from that point onwards I suppose because the whatever whatever connection was made then got fused from that moment onwards it's always conjured the same image and it is of standing outside uh, my grandparents' house in Shiraz in Iran and the last time I would have been there you know we would have been talking like early 80s because um, my family left I Iran in the early 80s um, and I just suddenly had this first time I smelt it I had this really really strong image of standing in the sort of alleyway outside the front door to their house the alleyway that led to the main road and, and that was pretty much it. It was just the image of me there outside, I think, like waiting for my grandmother or waiting for one of my aunts. And I remember saying this to my dad once, that this perfume always reminded me of their house. And he sort of laughed and he said, but that's because right by the door they had a huge jasmine growing. Um, and then I thought to myself, gosh, I wonder if, because in, in those days my dad smoked. Um, he's, he still smokes now, but a lot less. And I thought, I thought, wow, maybe, you know, it, it would have been not at all beyond the realms of possibility that I may have been standing there one evening, smelling the jasmine, smelling him smoking his cigarettes, and, 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 and somehow that olfactory memory just, just, just stayed in my mind and, and got unlocked the first time I smelled the scent from Italie Bois d'Orange. Um, so, so I get that this is a very, very personal take on the outdoors, but I do also maintain, insist, that this scent captures the way jasmine smells if you just happen to catch the scent on the breeze. Uh, it, it, quite a few of the houses in in the Wandsworth area, you know, sort of in Balham, Tooting in South London, have jasmines growing in their front gardens. And if you're sort of strolling along there, maintaining social distance, if you're strolling along there um, of an evening, you, you do you do feel the scent of jasmine on on the breeze, and and there's something about the sort of elusive, gentle quality of that particular smell that I think is captured here. So obviously this is indolic, but it's not overly indolic. It's not overly heady. It doesn't it doesn't push hard on the sort of banana note that sometimes you get from jasmine. It's basically fresh green. Um, innocent up to a point. I mean, there is a, there is a, there is a, there's always a maturity about jasmine. You know, I don't think jasmine can ever be fully innocent. Um, and yeah, and uh, uh, it, it has a completely transporting effect on me. And and um, that's why I had to include it on this list. So we are pretty much at the halfway mark, which is a good point for me to say. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to episode 73 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, where today we're doing a special rundown of my top 10 favourite perfumes that remind me of the outdoors, which is also kind of like doing my top 10 favourite perfumes for spring 2020, a list that I have tried not to overthink because one of the things I'm very, very good at in life is overthinking. So other fantastic scents are available and please let me know some of your favourites. If you haven't uh, subscribed to my channel already, please consider doing so. Please consider telling as many other people about it as you'd like to. Please give me thumbs up. If you're watching on uh, Facebook, give me hearts, likes, etc. Never ever hesitate to leave a comment or ask a question. I generally am able to get back to every single person who leaves a comment. Um, and also, maybe in the comments, g give me some ideas for other episodes like this that you might enjoy. One that I'm working on is my top 10 favorite perfumes that I enjoy smelling on Madame Persilaise. So the one that I did the other day, my top 10 favorite perfumes was kind of, I suppose you could say, top 10 favorites for men. And then I guess the other list would basically essentially be a sort of top 10 favorites for women. Um, I am working on that. I kind of got quite excited about it and got into it and 
started um, started overthinking it. <laughs> I, I made a list and then I thought, oh, but what about this one? So so watch this space. That that uh, that episode is coming. But if you've got ideas for any others, then please let me know. Okay. Uh, let me see if I've missed any comments. Uh, Lynn Smell says, wasn't Fougere Royale the first to be marketed for men in the 1870s? I would, you know, bow down to the experts, but I don't think that actually was specifically marketed towards men or women. I think it was just a, a smell that it came out. And then I think what happened is that it became popular with men. And Emma says, Ostara is spring in a bottle for me. Again, that was another one because I think I still have my bottle of Ostara somewhere. That was another one that I wondered about including here. Very, very, very sadly discontinued uh, that that perfume because I guess it didn't do all that well for Penhaligons, which is a real shame. Okay, I think we need to move on because we've got two more that are li a, a little bit lavendery. I think maybe we should do the other one now. And this one, apologies to the brand, if anybody from the brand happens to be watching this, but I don't have, I don't have the proper bottle for this. Um, this was, because uh, sometimes when brands send you samples, you know, you get them as like sort of lab samples like this or, um, or vials. Uh, this happens to be an amouage and it comes in a standard amouage men's bottle. So if you'd like to see what that bottle looks like, you can look it up. This is Sunshine Man from uh, 2015. I, I just I thought, gosh, is Sunshine, Sunshine Man really, really already nearly five years old? Composed by Pierre Negrin and Fabrice Pellegrin. Uh, again, another one that I wore a lot in, must have been in the summer of 2015. This was from the time when Christopher Chong was still creative director. And th th this one, I, I thought, you know, absolutely did what it said on the tin. The sunshine part, anyway, not the man. <laughs> you know what I mean. It, it's, this is where where the Caron uh, lavender is. Simple, you know, not simplistic, but simple, uh, streamlined, clear, um, lucid. This is probably, this is probably the grandest of the perfumes that I've got. I'm just thinking of the last four that I've got here. This is probably the most symphonic, but it still does have a very, very clear, sweet lavender line with the addition of Immortel and pepper. That's what I loved about this one, um, because it, it's, it's, got some, it's got some bite, it's got some energy. And so I suppose that's where I like the connection with sunshine, because sunshine can put you into a little bit of a sort of lazy, languorous mode, but of course it can be extremely energizing. And so this is, this is the smell of, you know, the, de the determination that you, you know, you kind of wake up one day and the weather's really great and you think, oh gosh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go for a brisk walk, maybe I'll go for a run, maybe I'll get all of that stuff done in the garden, um, just enjoy the sunshine as much as I can. And it's that, it's that pepper that does it. And I think it's, it's the combination of the pepper and the lavender that, that I enjoyed so much in this scent. Um, and I'm trying to be careful with it. I'm, probably one day I'll have to get myself a a full bottle but um yeah even even now that sort of because immortel of course has a kind of spicy feel to it as well and it, it's all of this is just fascinating how different materials are handled by different perfumers in the caron the 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 vanilla seems to make the lavender softer here um the 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 pepper seems to make the the, the lavender, hang on, what did I say? In the Caron, the vanilla seems to make the lavender softer. Here, the pepper seems to make the lavender more energetic, more bracing, um, maybe even a touch greener, I don't know. You've all gone very quiet. Is this because you've all disappeared or because you're just so in awe of this list or you're just kind of thinking, oh my goodness, what is this guy saying? I don't agree with any of it. Um, yeah, the last, oh, fine, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just keep going with the comments. Um, and let's do, okay, let's do this. This one really is one of my favorite outdoorsy scents to the, to the extent that I've even written about it in some of the fiction that I've, that I've been working on. This is from 2007 by Jacques Polge, uh, Belle Respiro from Chanel. This is still the EDT version, which I, I do think is, is 
superior to the EDP. In so many of the cases with the Chanel exclusives, the EDTs seem to be superior. I think because a lot of the EDPs just seem to be too loaded. Like the, the, the concept, you know, the, the original execution of the perfume was done in an EDT form. And maybe there was something about that concentration, that particular dosage that just worked best. Um, like for instance, I definitely prefer number two, sorry, number 22 EDT to the EDP. I still like the EDP, but the EDT has got much more lift. Same goes for this. Um, Sycamore, I suppose, I think the EDP is okay. But um, somebody better say something because I'm getting paranoid now. I haven't heard from you anything from you for about 10 minutes. But Bella Respiro, here we go. Um, Where should we pop it? Let's let's give it pride of place here. Is that it's angled as well? I don't know whether you can see the. Oh. Has there ever been a fragrance with with a more appropriate name? You do just want to. You want you do want to respiro very bell. Um, This is, it's, it's green, but it's not obviously galbanum green. It's not obviously shelled peas green, or it's not even obviously cut grass green. It's, it's something about the meeting point between green notes and marine notes. And this, this really is the smell of healthy, beautiful, pure, clean air. And that's why I say that it's it's fantastically named. Um, you know, if I ever sort of owned a spa or something like that, a place where I wanted, you know, people who come, who come there to, to feel better and, and something focused on well-being, I would want the smell of the place to be something like Bel Respira. It's just so supremely, supremely uplifting and life affirming and 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 yet nothing seems to be forced about it 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 just achieves its its effect in the most graceful way and i've also always found something very very romantic about it i always get this image of standing at the edge of a garden um overlooking the sea and so if you don't mind what I would actually like to do, because I thought, I thought, well, th this is what I want to say, so I may as well actually say it how I've said it. I'd like to read to you, it's only one paragraph, my review of Bel Respiro from my book, uh, because I thought I, I thought I still can't really express it any differently from, you know, how I did when I wrote this. Few perfumes capture a moment in time with such startling clarity, I wrote. <laughs> You're standing in the garden of a Mediterranean mountaintop villa, the wind from the sea mixes with the sharp smell of the cut grass and blows through your hair. Um, sunlight rests upon your clean skin. From below, the scent of trees and rose gardens rises up towards you. And as you take a deep breath and smile, a voice in your head whispers that all of life is yours for the taking. You have nothing to hide and everything to look forward to. That's why I love it. However, this is the joys of technology. I seem to be getting messages popping up on my screen here from other social media platforms, um, from with people saying, ah, people saying that the chat has stopped functioning, and uh, that's that's Angeline telling me that on Instagram, and Q George telling me on Facebook. Thank you very much, and good thinking for letting me know. Um, have I have I inadvertently? Okay, we can't make comments, that's why no one's talking. <laughs> I wonder if I can do something. Um, live chat, all messages are visible. Let me see if I can do something. So if I say testing, how annoying. Um, as far as I know, I haven't. I didn't actually press anything or do anything. Oh, and it says error sending message to me as well. Okay. So I guess it's I guess it's obviously a YouTube thing. 
This is going to be so annoying for the people who are watching um, after the after the live broadcast. I think maybe what I'm just going to have to do, because I've got three perfumes left, I think I'm just going to have to carry on and, and pretend that you're here. I've got error sending message as well. I have no idea why that's happened. And all I can do is apologize and... Oh, hang on. Emma says, I think it just went out for a minute and is back up. Okay. Um, Cloudy Wings says on Instagram, it's caught the virus too. Don't even joke about that. Don't. Okay. Well, I guess I guess we're back online. I was actually start. I was genuinely thinking. Oh my God! They they, they hate this. <laughs> Nobody's interested anymore. They've all got to make themselves a cup of coffee and have given up. Um, if you if you can't make a comment, then never mind. But maybe after the video has been uploaded, save what you were going to say and maybe actually leave it in a in you know a sort of permanent comment at, at the bottom of the video after it's been uploaded. But um, sorry about that. Just the one has come. Through even the one that I wrote hasn't gone through. Let me try that again. Let me just try sending that again and see what it says. Sorry, but we've got we've got three perfumes to go, so I think I will keep going. Uh, let's do let's do another Jean Claude Elena, and it, it's got to be another garden, I think. But I kind of surprised myself by going for this one because this is one of the gardens that I I turn to the least. Uh, I don't very often turn to the Jardin de Monsieur Lee. Um, and also, I don't terribly often turn to this one, which is the... Oh, Marcus says, always enjoy listening to you. Okay, so I guess somebody's back. My comment didn't go. S some people are experiencing difficulties, some aren't. Sorry. Um, this is Un Jardin sur le, sur le Toit, the rooftop garden, right? And actually inspired by a, a very specific rooftop garden, the garden at the top of one of the Hermes buildings in Paris. And I've... I, I haven't smelt this for a while, actually. When I when I took it out of my collection, I, I was moved to smell it, and then I thought, no, 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 you know, you haven't smelt it for a while. Actually, leave it for for the broadcast. But I've always thought of it as one of the best um, encapsulations, one of the best attempts to capture um, sort of uh, orchard smells, you know, apples and pears, because it is meant to be the apple and pear trees. And no, it's coming here again. It's just, it's just so note perfect. I mean, it's just like sinking your teeth into the juiciest, most ripe pear. And of course, pears have a very, very close connection with apples. Um, and there's, there's, but there's a green apple note in there, maybe a red apple note. It's, it's really, really tremendous achievement by Jean-Claude Elena in the sense of it being, you know, olfactory imagery, olfactory illusion creation. He, he liked doing that sort of thing, you know, he liked sort of doing little um, olfactory conjuring tricks, basically. And it, it's, it's got the sweetness of the apples, but, the, but that kind of sour tart bite as well. It's got the greenness of the trees. Um, and this, is a, this, is, this really is a very, very innocent garden. So I think for something that's meant to be a representation of essentially an urban space or a space that is upon an urban space there is no sense of the urban here at all so this is this is about an escape um, this is a, I guess about taking yourself as far away from the urban as possible while remaining within that urban setting um, and just enjoying enjoying the gentleness of nature I think this is probably this is probably the gentlest um, garden some regular viewers and readers will know that my favourite of the garden series, without any question, is Jardin sur le Nil. Um, but I, want, I asked myself why I didn't bring it by, include it in this list, because I don't think for me that is outdoorsy. What I love about that one, actually, is its handling of incense. Um, but this is, this is really, really sweet. And I, and I mean sweet in the, in the sense of the sentiment rather, rather than, than the taste. Um, it's just really, really, really charming. I'm guessing by the fact that not lots of... My, my viewer number has gone up, so something's happened on this screen here. But I'm guessing by the fact that um, a lot of you are not writing that we, we are still having a problem. My comment um, hasn't gone yet, so each time I tap testing, I think it just sort of says, can't leave a comment. Well, you know what? I guess it was bound to happen. Uh, these YouTube broadcasts had actually been going really, really well for a while, but um, 
I'll try one thing actually. I won't do anything on here because I don't want to I don't want to muck that up. But I'm going to close the YouTube app and reopen it and see and go back to the live stream. If you are watching this as a recording people, I'm really really sorry. Please bear with me. Um, and let's see if it lets me leave a comment then. No, still error sending message. Sorry. So we've got two more to do in this run and 10 minutes to go. Right, let's do this. And this is the last one that is a bit uh, lavendery. Ashfaq, uh, uh, Ashfaq has sent me a message that's come up on my screen on Instagram. I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> I'm not going to read it. But yeah, I hope you're wrong. This is, oh, hang on. This is uh, another Mathilde Laurent. So she gave us Herba Fresca from Garlin. And then when she went over to Cartier, she gave us this in the Les Heures range. This is the third hour or L'Heure Vertueuse, um, which is, a, is sort of a play on green, of course, and also virtuous. This was, oh, I still remember so clearly the first time I smelt this. I was on the, the ground floor of Harrods in the Black Hall, the Black Perfumery Hall. Edmund Rudnitska, widely considered to be one of the greatest perfumers of all time, if not the greatest, said that truly great perfumes initially must elicit a shock, a, a kind of, <gasps> what the hell is that? I don't think I've ever smelled anything like this before. And this one elicited that from me instantly. And I just knew there and then that it would turn out to be one of my favorite perfumes. And it's interesting why it elicited a shock because it's not, um, it, 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 it's not per particularly an unexpected note because, because what you get first is freshly cut grass. But, but it just does it. It's like you're there. It's like you've sort of gone and ripped a whole load of the grass in your hands and you're just burying your face in it. And it, oh, it's, it's, just, it's just remarkable. It's spring. It's every single perfect spring that you could hope for rolled into one. And then it goes into more herbal notes and lavender notes and thyme and, and, and sort of slightly more bitter herbal notes, but it's just so beautifully handled and, and the development of it is so, so, so seamless. I, I think one of the finest things that Mathieu de Laurent has ever done. Um, in a way, it's kind of a shame that it's in such an exclusive range because these scents from Cartier are still so expensive. So many of them in that Les Heures range are, are extraordinary. Uh, I think they're all, at the very least, good. Some are perhaps a little bit more pedestrian or, or ordinary than others, but there are some real gems there. And, and a lot of them are really, really vivid. Like, for example, is it L'Heure Défendue, The Forbidden Hour, is one of the most, again, incredible evocations of uh, liqueur-filled chocolates that I've ever, ever, ever smelled. Um, and this is, oh, I, I just love this stuff. This, 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 is, this is like, this is like, it is like, she returned to the sort of same ideas from Herba Fresca. Herba Fresca has got a kind of sci-fi feel to it because there is something just slightly odd and strange about its mint, uh, which um, which makes it compelling. And I think that stems from the fact that actually it isn't really a mint note, it's another material. Here, it's almost like she's decided to make things super na supremely na uber natural, not supernatural, but you know, extremely natural by going right down to the level of, of, of the field of grass and, you know, presenting one herb after another beneath our noses. It's, it is just the most verdant thing imaginable. I just adore this perfume. And we're doing well for time, but we're doing rubbish for comments. So I'm really, really sorry, people. Uh, but, but like I said, please, please, please do leave a, you know, a, a, an actual comment you know, below the video after the fact, and then maybe we can have a bit of a conversation going there. The last perfume uh, in my top 10 list of the perfumes that make me think of the outdoors is, um, interestingly, also by a woman. And let me just, have I done this right? And it is, I just adore this perfume. I love this perfume so much. Maybe even actually more to, to, to smell than to wear and it is none other than En Passant from Frederic Mal, composed by Olivia Giacobetti, still the only perfume that she has made for the brand. Um, and th th not many uh, female perfumers have been used for that brand because it's uh, Olivia Giacobetti and I think still only um, 
Sophia Groisman. No, Fanny Bell has done something for him, hasn't she? And I think he rates her, so maybe we'll see more from her. En passant, um, is, is, is just so heartbreakingly beautiful. And, and I know a lot of you out there will be aware of it, and it's just so annoying that you can't tell me how much you love it and that we can't share the, this with each other, but never mind, I guess we know. We've, we've had a good run of no technological problems, but never mind. Um, at least I know it's the reason you're not talking is not because you hate me. And, and also such a beautifully named perfume, and I think it's appropriate that we end on this one, um, because the whole idea was to talk about scents that somehow um, give you a sense of walking outdoors and picking up scents on the breeze in, in passing, you know, en passant. Um, she got, she's got that idea so perfectly because it's, it's the diffusiveness and the volume control that is just so spot on. This is not picking up the flowers or the herbs and shoving your face in them. This is not something far away. This, this really is you walking past them at a relaxed pace and the breeze picks up and then suddenly you're surrounded by the smell and then you walk on and the smell is gone. What is the smell? For those of you who don't know, it's officially listed as lilac, um, lilac freesia, a kind of cucumber note at the top as well, the sort of watery aqueousness. And that is all correct. I agree with that completely. But I also like to think of this actually as a really, really great lily of the valley scent. It's, it's not listed there at all. And it isn't a straightforward lily of the valley. You know, it's not Durissimo lily of the valley or Hermes Muguet porcelain lily of the valley. But see, even now as I smell it, it, it I'm sure that there are Muguet lily of the valley type notes in there. That there's probably a connection between lilac, freesia, lily of the valley. And that 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 is just the quintessence of spring um, and spring is uh, you know a symbol of hope and rebirth and of the fact that the sunshine is coming and everything is going to be okay and even though there is a sadness about this perfume because because um, transience the idea of transience of course is built into its name it's en passant you know you don't catch this feeling you, you walk on and it's gone um, so there, there there is that kind of sad inflection to it but I think that's what makes it all the more romantic and affecting and compelling and, and, and moving. You know, th this is probably one of the most moving perfumes. I find Bel Respiro very moving, but this one as well, I think, is, 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 is mo moving. The others, the others are energizing, happy, um, but this one has a, a, a sort of pensive quality to it that I think is just great. Oh, I, I just love this. If you, haven't, if you haven't tried En Passant, you really, really need to make an effort to do so. So, Sorry about that technological mess up. I have no, oh, I've got a I've got a comment now from Light Glory. En passant, don't you think that it's too synthetic for a male perfume? I love the opening, but I have a problem with the mid and dry down. Honestly, no, no. I mean, I'm gl I'm glad one comment got through, but who knows why? I mean, maybe it's to do with people's. Oh, Ashfaq is saying hi again. Are, are you all going to be back? And <laughs> while I'm going, so apologies for the technological mess up. But as I say, please do leave a comment uh, on the video. It usually takes YouTube about 10 minutes to upload it properly, and so then after that it will be on there and, and we'll be able to chat on there. DB70 is saying hello. Yeah, I guess you're back now, but um, lovely to hear your description, says Lynn Smith. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get to interact, because of course that's what I enjoyed the most. And Jardin sur was my first love from the house, says Drew, but I almost, I almost get a banana leaf note. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, absolutely you would. I'm sure you would from that. Yeah, thanks YouTube for letting the comments come now. I want to see Bond number nine brand assessment review. Uh, Joao says, Ulrich Lang, absolutely. The notes caught my attention. What do you think? I think it's fantastic. I love it. There's a review on my blog. And for spring nights, Timbuktu from Latisan Parfumeur. Yeah, interesting. And Cousin says, I love Heure Douze, the 12th hour from that Cartier line. Yes, that's great. So really, really sorry. Save the comments for now. Wait for the video to get uploaded and then put them in a comment below and, and when we'll have an exchange there. Please, please, please look after yourselves. If you are in a place where you're meant to be staying at home and you are in a position to stay at home, then please stay at home. Let us all look after ourselves here. Let's be in touch. Um, and uh, I promise to be back with a new video very, very soon. And don't forget to let me know if you've got some ideas for top 10 videos like this. Until then, look after yourself seriously. Be good, be kind to each other. Take care, bye.